there's a question of how these will all interoperate with each other and um, how we can create bridges between them. At what level will they be interoperable? Will it be a technical level or a logical level? Um, will we have, you know, what at what level will the, those bridges be created? And then again, I suppose it's not only a question of interoperability between new CBDCs, but also CBDCs will not signal the end um, of the existing payments infrastructures that we have. So how will CBDCs um, coexist and interoperate with existing payments infrastructure as well? Um, so Gilbert, what are your thoughts on the, the thorny questions of interoperability and how that can work in future and how we can avoid um, instead of opening up access between um, jurisdictions, um, having um, having more open, uh, open access, uh, sorry, <laughs> closing up access instead. Thank you, Jenna. Um, I think it's a very good question and, and a topical one because it's one of the, the areas that needs looking at and solving today because so it's ready for tomorrow because interoperability is, is one of the key components of, of mainstream use um, and it is it is quite broad. So, so I think the first thing is, you know, the global financial system works. You know, we're not here to turn it off and start again. I think one of the things we need to consider is um, interoperating and, and integrating the existing financial systems and, and the RTGS systems, settlement systems, banking systems that we have in place to be able to work with DLT and blockchain type of payment systems. So, so the first thing is let's extend the capabilities of, of our existing financial system to, to be able to talk decentralization, blockchain and DLT to have better use cases and, and help with that evolution of money. The, the other consideration we need to look at is if we're going to do that, um, and especially with the wholesale versus retail uh, scenario, uh, security is quite important because national um, payment systems are, are deemed national critical infrastructure. I mean, they're, they're, they're critical to running economies. If, if they collapse, you know, we, we have huge impact to, to countries. So what we do today in payment systems need to also evolve to help with you know, digital assets, CBDCs, and, and DLT types of payment systems as well. And then finally, when we're creating a digital asset as a CBDC, you know, with a, every other technology before us, we, we haven't all used the single same version as, as everyone else. You know, everyone needs flexibility. Everyone needs an agnostic approach to it. And so we need to allow participants to the interbank network, which is usually going to be the wholesale interbank network, to bring their own DLT, which are the commercial banks, and for them to run digital assets uh, in terms of wholesale or retail CBDCs that can work across the different types of technology stacks, but also across the different types of borders as well. So, so doing all of this is, is quite complex and, and, and you know, a, a good way to go ahead as an industry is, is to, to create standards and, and follow that and work together. I think there's a, there's a great and enormous opportunity to transform the financial system uh, it doesn't come often, it's every 30 years or so. Uh, and having standards based uh, approach is, is kind of a right way to, to allow everyone to bring the best of their uh, expertise around governance, legal, cyber security, technology, et cetera. So we can all have standards that can actually work for the technology that we're building together. Thanks, Gilbert. And so you've, you've talked more, I think, about the, 